What up, meatheads? It's Travis, American Butcher, and this is the Meat Blog Podcast, the weekly podcast by butchers for everyone. Sorry about that. I don't know if that picks up. Yeah, let me... Hold on, let me put my email notifications on mute. Sorry, that was uh, uh, just my fan email account, uh, Travis Stockstill fan at uh, Gmail. It's pretty annoying because every time someone emails me, it goes off and uh, sometimes I forget to put my phone on silent um, and just goes off all the time. Yeah, so hold on, let me just, uh, oh, sorry, hold on, it's and silent, no, nope, all right, okay, I think I got it now. So again, welcome to the Meat Block Podcast, it's mid-December, we're getting the best and worst of lists coming out, and they are magnified right now, because it is the end of a decade, my friend. Man, 2000 teens were kind of weird. Oh, you fucking dogs. All right, they're done eating, and they're just probably going to walk back again because they are annoying. Oh, here comes Max. He's being super annoying. I swear, if I was upstairs right now, they'd be like hogging all the bed and keeping me away from my wife. But since I'm down here, they feel an obligation to just ruin my life even, even further. It's like they have a vendetta against my happiness either be it with intimacy or recording because both those things are equal to me equal on the scale of importantness and dog annoyance anyway it being december um this episode is is it's more of a call i want to hear your best and worst white elephant gifts for one because I just got done with a Christmas party at work, and I got some antidotes about it. Good cutting enhances the quality of good meat. Poor cutting results in an inferior piece of meat, regardless of quality. So it's no secret that I, I haven't worked retail in a long time. And, you know, because I work in a different part of the industry, and I forget what it's like to work in in retail and customer service and things like that. And <sighs> yeah, this story just happened to me a couple hours ago. It's a great tale of me uh, doing the first Christmas shopping in person I have done in years. The first in real life Christmas shopping, not online in real life. So Ever since me and my wife have been together, we've never gotten each other gifts. Uh, we'll give each other a card. It's more because we're either at a place financially where it didn't make sense or we're actually like super poor or we don't need to have a tangible thing to show our that we care about each other. And also another thing is that if we wanted something and we're able to afford it, we would just get it for ourselves then. And another way that makes shopping for my wife um, difficult is because we have shared finances. So not out of like, so sometimes I feel like I'm, um, economically held prisoner that if I get gas at the Chevron, why didn't they get it at, you know, Costco? If, why did you go to this store? Why, blah, 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 blah. blah. And I'm making my wife sound, uh, unpleasant. It, it's more of curiosity. I hope. So for me to even do Christmas shopping, um, you know, I have to not have a tail, a tell. Like if I took uh, some money out of a our ATM, you know, it'd raise eyebrows and go against this whole not gift giving thing or, you know, whatever. Um, our happiness and our love is all we need. But also, I like capitalism and tangible things. Gimme, 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 gimme. So I have an auto loan account that um, is just 100% in my name. So once a month, I would take money out of a certain amount and then deposit it in there. But it would always be a, I would always end up taking out more just because of the way it broke down and how ATMs work. And then with the deposit. So after a year of doing this, I ended up with secret savings and I could have been selfish and I could have, you know, blown it on 
on candy or a trip to Cabela's or a new gun or something cool like that. But me being the loving husband that I am, I wanted to surprise my wife with something that she mentioned that she would like. Now, on the off chance she will listen to this before Christmas, what she won't, because it would be weird because she's never listened to an episode of this podcast because she thinks that it's weird and awkward, just like how I don't enjoy listening to episodes of this podcast because I also think it's weird and awkward. Then again, I do ask my uh, two coworkers that I work with what they think of every episode. So today is Monday, the 16th. The trifecta happened today. I had the secret money. I got off work a little early, and the outlet malls are on my way home. So, knowing that if I went there before I went home, there would be no suspicion why I was late. Because I got off about 40 minutes early. I go to the first store, get something, pick it out, put it in the car, drive to the second store, park, lock my door, and purchase the last half of my wife's gift. All said and done, took about 20 minutes. I thought I even had time to wrap it. Get back to the car, put my key in the door. Because I locked it, like I previously mentioned, that's called foreshadowing. And the key does nothing. Doesn't turn the lock, doesn't budge it whatsoever. I normally don't lock my car at all. I, I've i had several cars broken into, including this one at the Seattle airport, but it wasn't broken into. They just opened the door and stole a bunch of stuff, and then, you know, it was fine. They didn't break anything. That's why I don't lock my car, because I'd rather come back to, you know, $20 worth of change and garbage stolen than a broken windshield. But with the first half of my wife's gifts, I was a little nervous, so I just locked it. And it was a conscious thing where I was like, well, I should lock it now because I, you know, don't want to have to deal with this. It's just something I didn't even think about. Now, my actual car that I drive is a Ram 1500. I haven't driven it in a couple months because of this lovely commuter car that I drive. It is a 2008 HHR. If you want to know what that looks like, just Google shitty worse PT Cruiser. It's like if someone wanted to, it's like someone said, hey, let's make the PT Cruiser masculine, but it still just came out as a wet fart. If you're out there listening to this and you're driving a HHR, that's okay. I do too. And guess what? I recognize this. It sucks. People make fun of me when I go to the drive-thru. The people at Starbucks giggle and say, <laughs> nice car. And I want to be like, hey, no, my actual other car is, is, is a cool pickup truck. As a man approaching middle age, showing insecurities of a junior high kid is unflattering, even to the 15-year-old who works at Starbucks. This 2008 HHR does not have a fob. And when this lock did not turn, I would simply... Most people would be like, oh, go unlock another door or the trunk and try to get in that way. Well, my friend, this car is uniquely designed with one key hole on the driver's side. I panic. What am I going to do? And being at the outlet malls, I see a security vehicle drive by. And I go, oh, awesome. This is a big parking lot. And this shit happens all the time here. They will simply have a coat hanger or an easy solution. So a security guard drives by a few minutes. I wave him down and explain the situation, asking simply for a coat hanger or perhaps they had a Slim Jim. Now a security guard in this situation, whose job is theft prevention and security, said it was against their policy to supply such items for liability purposes. I assured them, that they wouldn't be doing anything nefarious, and in fact, I would be doing the breaking in of my own vehicle. They just had to help me secure the tools. They stood their ground on their decision and their company policy and said sorry and to feel free to let them know if I needed any more help. I politely smiled and said, you haven't been any help yet. And then they drove away. Now, An obvious thing is I could have called a tow truck and they could have come out there, 
But again, trying to be discreet with the fact that I am Christmas shopping with this secret cash that I have somehow procured is I did not want to leave a paper trace of paying for a tow truck on a credit card. I'm 20 minutes into this endeavor, and I for sure thought I was going to be home with time to Christmas wrap. Looking at the clock, realizing my wife would be getting off work soon and starting her commute, I wanted to get this situation resolved so I could at least make it back home before she got there. I start taking an inventory of my resources. Call a tow truck. Call my wife. Call my father-in-law. Somehow break into my car. Break a windshield. Pry the door open. And I started at pry the door open. I was able to get my fingers into the car big enough where I could slip a wedge into the door. But I had nothing to wedge. I only had the tools available to me at the time. So I took off one of my windshield wipers, made a wedge with that, took off one of the shoelaces from the new pair of shoes that I bought as a Christmas present, and tied a key around it. Not my car key, a extra key. With a slip knot on the end of it, dangled it through the door, trying to loop the lock button, cinch it, and easily let myself in. So I get it all the way down, but I'm about an inch too far out with the curve of the door to loop the lock, so I try wedging it and try to slap it towards it with the windshield wiper. Releasing the tension that the door had created on the shoestring causing it to fall all the way down, key and all, to my driver's seat. At this point, the security guard comes back with their lights, and I am thinking, oh my, maybe they took pity on me, got around their stupid policy, and are going to help me out. But that wouldn't be show-worthy when I wouldn't it. That doesn't work out. That's not how the real world works. They roll down their window, and I say, Yes, uh, are you able to help me? And they said, no, we got some complaints that someone was breaking into a car. So I'm just here to show that, you know, we're on top of it and people don't need to call anymore. So now I'm trying to get into my car with an audience. Still turning the key, still with no result. The lock ain't budging. And I try the shoelace trick again with the second shoelace I have. I can't use my own shoelaces because I'm wearing Georgia Romeos. So I tie the other end of the shoelace instead of having it loose to the zipper of my hoodie. So if I let go accidentally, it's not going to fall. The security guard is coming up with helpful tips like, is it a fob? Maybe you need to get a battery. And asking questions, has this ever happened before? Now, my patience is running pretty thin by now. My wife is off of work and most likely going to be home. I'm going to have to admit defeat and ruin what I'm sure will be a great Christmas surprise. I call my father-in-law, the previous owner of the HHR, who I know has the original fob somewhere. I call him ring a ling ling voicemail. And again, this is a man who's hearing aids are connected directly with his phone. So I know he's just leaving me on red and ignoring me. The third time he picks up, with a little bit of annoyance. I explain to him the situation, and I say, bring the fob, extra keys, a coat hanger, a pry bar, and a jacket. I am freezing. I have been outside in 30 degree weather for the last 40 minutes with only a thin hoodie on. Some people would say, oh, that's nothing. Where I live, it's like, you know, I, it's frozen all the time. It's like I live on Pluto. You know what? I don't care. I was fucking cold. Now, knowing my wife will beat me home, raising suspicion, I have to let her know something. I just send the basic text. My key won't work. Your dad is meeting me with a backup and tools. I will be home after you. No follow-up questions. Thank you.
to where I was, what I was doing, etc. After a very long 18 minutes, he shows up with an arsenal, which would allow us to break into every single fucking car in that parking lot. But wanting to rule out the obvious situation first, I take the fob, hit the unlock button, and it moves maybe an eighth of an inch up. I hit it again and nothing. I put the key in thinking that maybe with that little bit of movement will allow some give. And boom, I was in the car. And that is my Christmas retail horror story. Hope you enjoyed. I know this episode wasn't about butchery in any sense. Next week's will be in some way or another. But until next time, keep your knives sharp and live in the margin. And if you like personal insight and stories like this, please sign up to my Patreon, where I do Q&As directly with people, how-to videos, and share more about my life. Thank you.